Hi guys, welcome to a special show. Look at these special people to come on my special show. We've got Don McCauley. How you doing, mate? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Good, good man. Mark Clower down the bottom right hand side. How you doing, Mark? It's good to see you again. And Todd. Uh, he's 6 a.m. by the way for, for Todd, <laughs> wherever he is, 6 a.m. Uh, how are you doing, Todd? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Good, good. And the lovely Karen, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. It's been a long time. It has, it has. And um, this is a bit of a, a new sort of show, maybe, maybe a rant, maybe not. We're going to have some a different conversation about a topic that graces many Facebook pages, many Facebook posts. Um, you hear about these sort of things all the time, and it's whether ex-members should come back to certain bands. So it could be a bit of a rant. It could we could actually argue, could we, on this show? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I mean, we're going to talk about big one first, but this comes in three little stages. The biggest, the biggest one I think on this list is always called out for, in my opinion, that, that, that what I follow on many you know, social media pages is, oh, you ready? Jeff Tate coming back to Queensryche. So I know what my view is, and I'll probably maybe have put a little post now and again on Facebook as well to back my view up. But I'm really interested <laughs> to see because... It really, there are some people that really differ opinion on this completely. And, um, you know, so I really, I'm really interested to hear everyone's view on Queen's right. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ladies first. Is that all right, Karen? So your view yeah, on this? Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Right. What do you reckon? Well, yeah, Queen's right was one of the ones on my list. It's a very obvious one, I think, for, for this particular group of people. Um yeah, Jeff Tate, they made their five best albums for me with Jeff Tate, but then they made many of their worst ones with Jeff Tate as well. So, But then I, I drifted away from Queen's Reich after Promised Land. That's where it all kind of went horribly wrong for me. I, I love Promised Land, and then after that, I didn't really listen to them for many years. And I only really came back to Queen's Reich with the last two albums, um, which have been fantastic. So for me personally, I'm not sure I want, would want Jeff Tate to come back to Queensryche or not now. I might if he came back with someone else. And that's something we're going to talk about in a minute. Oh, right. Yeah, I know exactly what you're going to say there. Well, OK, excellent view on that. So you, you're sort of on the fence a little bit. Yeah, on Jeff yeah. Tate. OK, Todd, what do you reckon, mate? Well, it all gets down to the quality of the music, right? So it, it, mm -hmm. are they... Are the, is the current lineup releasing quality music? And if not, would that original person help that? You know, would they would that person improve that? And obviously, it's all speculation. But in in my opinion, I think that as uh, as Karen said, they've been releasing really really good music the last several years now with their with Latori, and I don't see a reason why why they would want to invite him back i mean they they're seem to be firing on all cylinders you know they're they're really releasing great music he sounds great live i just saw them earlier this year and they sound fantastic and i i i don't have a you know uh and and as if they their relationship is toxic then why why introduce that back in the band you know but for the fans, man. For the fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's always the argument, isn't it? Yeah. You, know? yeah. you only have to spend two hours on stage together, so why can't you just do it for the fans? Right. Yeah. They probably can't spend two fucking minutes together, let alone two hours. That's the uh, that's the point. And let's not forget, like you said, about toxic relationship. You know, it's, it wasn't that long ago he gobbed on the drummer, you know I mean? I know the drummer ain't there no more. But, yeah, <laughs> not the best thing to do. Um, yeah, but some really great point there, Todd. I've got a feeling I know what my, uh, Mr. Mark Clover is going to say about it. What you got to say about it? From a, from a nostalgic viewpoint, would I like to see Tate back with him? Uh, maybe. Um, 
I saw him twice back in the day, once with Ozzy in 86, and then I saw him on a Promised Land tour. And uh, I don't know, from a from a nostalgic standpoint, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but um, I don't think they would have the chemistry anymore. Uh, it's just, I think there's been too much bad blood there. And to be honest, the chemistry between or with the new lineup Todd has pretty much become the uh, spokesman of that band now. It's almost like he'd been there forever. Usually when you see an interview, occasionally you'll see Michael Wilton do an interview, but for the most part, it's Todd, and it's it's really his band now, uh, you know, to be honest. And uh, I don't know. I, would I like to see Jeff maybe make some special appearances? That'd be cool. Uh, his voice definitely is not what it used to be, and I'm not sure he could do some of his own songs justice anymore. I've seen some fairly recent videos where he he's actually sounding a little better today than he was, say, two years ago. Yeah. Um, so it'd be kind of cool to see him make some you know one-off special appearances, but uh, definitely as far as new music, no, I don't want him back because... Every, as everyone else has said, the output after Promised Land was pretty dismal. Um, bringing the Garmo back may help uh, from a song, songwriting standpoint, but I don't really see that happening either. So uh, my vote is keep it as it is. Jeff can do his own thing on the side, and Queens Wright can continue on making good albums like they have for the last what has it been now 10 years yeah 12 yeah. years whatever it's been no great points there you're right about top though mate he is and i think that might be what gives people the ump as well that he's become this he's very charismatic he's very upfront. Yeah. And i don't think people like that sort of thing that might be part of it as well but um but i mean He's just a strong person, isn't he? Obviously, in the band, so he's very it's... enthusiastic about the band, and it and it shows. Yeah, agreed. Mister Dom McCauley, how are you doing, mate? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, anybody who's heard his output with Operation Mindcrime in recent years—that's the name of his band, if you don't know. Um, when he had to change it from Queensryche when there were two Queensrykes anyway. So so now he has this band. I, I don't even know if they, they exist anymore, but uh, they made a couple of records and they were just dog shit. They were just terrible. He he, he, he seemed, I don't really know. Think. Huh? <laughs> Tell us what you're really oh, yeah. <laughs> They were. They were, I mean, you know, we've all, everybody can relate to Addicted to Chaos or to American Soldier or whatever. I mean, these things just weren't great. Um, but, you know, I think we're a bit more, we're a bit more um, into new music, whereas I think a lot of people our age mm -hmm. are just looking for a reunion and for them to tour the classic material. They don't give a shit if there's a new Queen Drake album with Chris DeGarmo. They want to go see them and relive some sort of youth, get drunk with their friends, sing along with Jet City Woman. That's what they want. You know what I mean? Um, unfortunately, I think a band is only as good as what they're creating these days. Mm. A lot of times when they get back together with original singers or lineups or whatever, they become, you know, a, 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 a non-creative band. They just tour the hits and they probably make more money that way. And But where do you draw the line between what you want your legacy to be or you're just out just to play the songs that you wrote 30, 40 years ago, you know, for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, so it really comes down to that. I mean, that'll probably pertain to just about any band we talk about today. Um, I'm always looking for new music and I respect bands that still are a creative force yeah. and don't just lay back on their, on their laurels. But um, as far as like a one-off tour, with an original lineup if they manage to get all five together i mean if they want to you know pay off their mortgage i guess they could do that but i'd much rather 
I'd much rather hear these new new records. You know, I, I have a friend who goes to a lot more gigs than I do these days. He goes to see everybody over and over again. Doesn't matter. And he he told me about he, he was going to see Queensrÿche. This was just about a month ago, and he said, "I'm so excited. They're doing their entire set is the original EP and the Warning." And I said, "You know." If that's what you're looking for, I guess that's great. But that pisses me off because they're not even acknowledging anything from the last five albums. Yeah. And I think if if you as a band aren't going to respect that material, how are your fans going to respect it? And you just go out and just play old old stuff all the time. So I'm a little pissed off at Queen's Rec right now, actually, because mm -hmm. of this tour. Um, I don't think they should be going back. Certainly play obscure album cuts. Certainly, you know, do, do surprises for people, whatever. But don't go out on tour and don't do anything from from what you've been doing for the last 10 years that your really hardcore fan base love those new records because they're great. So that's my two cents. Wow. I do like that. I, I, I hadn't really thought about that. Oh, the Origins. It's called The Origins Tour, isn't it? I think, at the moment. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're totally right. I mean, even you could even have the whole album, the whole warning album, couldn't you? And you could still fit 45 minutes of your own songs, your, your newer songs in. But yeah, not to play any is a is a really good point actually. I wonder if it's a little bit of a dig because of Tate having the rights to play. He has the right to play. Mind crime. I'm not not sure if it's the same thing with Rage for Order as I'm not really sure. But Empire, I think, is that one? I don't know. It might be, it might be. Um, but no, some some great points there. I'm totally, I'm totally against even one one off re reunion tour because I don't really want it. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, but if it happened, idea, it would it would have to be like a special all five members thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I, but I'm not sure what it would do to the band now. Obviously, if that if that happened, you know what I mean. I mean, look what happened to was it when. Um, you know, there's bad blood about it. what happens to Ronnie James Dio when he was with Sabbath and they even just wanted to like tour with, was it Ozzy wanted to headline or something? He said, no, fuck that. Yeah, they, they wanted you know? to support. <laughs> support Ozzy or whatever. <laughs> so, support themselves, basically, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think um, he would be too much of a strong character, Todd, the tour, to go, yeah, that's all right. You know, I'll take a couple of years off or whatever. You can go and with Jeff Tate. Um, I think Mark mentioned that Let's not forget. I mean, people are blinded, or or their ears are well, they ain't blinded because they're hearing. But what they hear when Jeff Tate sings is totally different than what I fucking hear. Do you know what I mean? Um, half the time, people are on... so so forgiving. You know, oh, it really yeah. blows me away when you see older bands on videos now doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and and this bleeds over to the pop world and and whatever. But um. Yeah, they're so forgiven. As long as as long as the name is there, and as long as the face that you remember is there, they yeah. just forgive just about anything. They're just yeah. so happy to be there. It's like they sound terrible. No, no, he no, sounds no. crap. I mean, no, look no. at I, you know it's going to be controversial, but look at Guns and Roses. I mean, I'm yeah. sure we've all seen videos with him trying to hit some notes these Great. days. Oh, and yeah. they're selling out stadiums. It's like yeah. people don't care about the quality of the product. No, they're just no. happy to be there, to drink with their friends, sing along to Sweet Child of Mine when it comes up, talk during the Chinese democracy songs. And, you know, that, that's what it's all about for a lot of people. Well, we've almost got this point now where people go, all right, it's shit, but at least they play live. It's like that now, isn't it? It's like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, at least we know it's, it's that bad. We know it's like, <laughs> I mean, so, oh, it's fucking awful. But I mean, I'm totally, with, I'm totally against the Jeff Tate thing. He, as a person, he looks a nightmare to work with for a start. Um, but, you know, people have really got short memory with the studio albums, as we know. And, you know, the, it's just uh, uh, all them same people that were moaning probably through those, all them years bring back the Queen's Reich sound, have now got the classic Queen's Reich sound, might be a little bit modern, might be a little bit more modern, which you want, you want it to be a bit different. Now they've got it, they're not happy, are they? It's Completely. Just you are right on with this one, man. <laughs> so what happens if Latora leaves? 
Okay. I don't know why he would, if you said, you know, he's like you said, he's, he's kind of a, uh, uh, you know, the face of the band. Yeah. So you wouldn't think he would leave, but what, you know, well, let's say he leaves. What, what do you want to, then what do you want to have happen? Do you want Tate back? Do you want him to find somebody else? I mean, that's, that's for the me, question. Yeah. Well, me, anybody, I guess. Well, for me, I would, I would want to find, another singer i mean there's there's probably plenty of great singers out there but it's the songwriting as well and it you know I, yeah. I think with, with todd you've got the songwriting there as well he obviously works they work closely with with all the band worked closely on that last album that was all writing together you could really tell um but I, I think you know if someone could come in with a voice like you know that theatrical range that todd or jeff tate used to have but if the songwriting ain't there, that that's it for me. It's just that's what it's all about. So it really depends on that for me. And I don't think Jeff Tate is really he's so strong minded and so I do what I want to do. I don't think he could ever bring that back to what we want. You know. And so. to Dom's point, there's the music that Tate has been releasing hasn't been that fantastic. You know, it's it's no. been a little out there out there. At least I haven't heard a lot of it, so I no. can't say. A, you know, to, to <laughs> any great degree, but you're not this, missing any jam. Oblivion no. now too is is a, a new band or the band he's been with more recently too, and I haven't heard anything from them, so I don't know mm -hmm. um, just what he's what he's been doing. But but again, the I mean for for us that's important, but the point is probably moot. The people that we're reading all these comments about that want take back, they don't they don't care about a new album. They just want to go and. Mm. Yeah. and relive their youth. And and they think that it's just going to appear on stage as 1991 again. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You know what I mean? Like it, in their head, that bring Tate back and we can actually, you know, get, um, it, it, it's not going to be the same, man. Well, the, the funny thing is, you read you read actual comments when you know, I heard Jeff Tate singing Take Hold of the Flame the other few months ago. He was a live performance. And he, he, was, he was either making the crowd sing or, you know, or, 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 and definitely not singing all the notes and totally at a lower register. And, you know, pe people are literally just so, like, that they're putting, he sounds like he does in 1986, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'd love to be in, in love with a band that much to deny all knowledge. Of <laughs> all no, that. no, no, no. Just a quick one. Staying on the Queen's right subject, let's put these two together because uh, I think Mark's already mentioned quickly Chris DeGarmo, but we've also got the Chris DeGarmo and maybe not so much the Scott Rockenfield situation. I know Scott Rockenfield now. I mean, that that, that, that is so, that's even, might even be worse than the Jeff Tate situation. <laughs> but um, what do we reckon on Chris DeGarmo and Scott Rockenfield, Karen? Quickly. Uh, say when I said I might tolerate uh, Jeff Tate coming back if it, if he came up with someone else that that'd definitely be Chris Garmo and that would be from the songwriting point of view I think Chris Garmo was so instrumental in writing you know those first five albums but then you got to remember he he was there for here in the now frontier as well so um, maybe it's not quite the utopia we all might like to think but didn't Chris Garmo go off to become a pilot or something? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I mean, you don't know with the here in the now frontier. That's one I bring up quite a bit. That I, I online all the I bring the Chris Gamo back. I always come up with the here in the now frontier um, example. But was that the reason he thought, "Oh fuck this," because I ain't got to say it. I ain't got to say in this band. I didn't even. Mm. Want it. I couldn't. I couldn't even write what I wanted to write because of Jeff's hate. I don't know. That yeah, who been, knows. Uh, yeah. Knows, but, yeah, but for me, if they were if they were ever going to get back together, Chris Guamo would be a, an essential ingredient in that. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. About you, Todd. Again, I, I think that they're releasing quality output with with mm -hmm. the team they got. So I, I don't know. I don't see an advantage to going back now. If something were to happen to one of the people that were in the band, you know then maybe you invite him back, you know, if he's interested. But I don't think that it's, I don't see a purpose of, uh, you know, why mess with the the formula that you've got? If you've got great, great albums that you're, that you're still releasing, then 
and your tour, you know, they sound great live. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't, I don't see a reason why you would do it. And unless, like I said, something ha- were to happen with to somebody that's already in the band. Yeah. No, great point. <laughs> Mark, you've already mentioned DeGamo, obviously. Is that a factor for you, do you reckon? DeGamo coming back? So from a, from a songwriting standpoint, I think it would help, but I just, I don't see it happening in a million years. If he is mm-hmm. truly, if, if he's a, a jet pilot now, he's making a hell of a lot more money than he would with Queensryche, you know, touring clubs. Uh, as far as Scott, uh, he's one of my favorite drummers. Love, mm-hmm. love what he did in the band. But again, I think there's so much bad blood there. You know, even if he did come back, you know, how long would it be before it imploded again? So probably best just to uh, leave that alone and, you know, move on with, with what they're all doing now. Agreed. About you, Dom, the same sort of thing? Yeah, it's same sort of thing. I think, um, yeah, it, it would have to be, as far as I'm concerned, for it to be anything for kind of special, it would have to be all five of them and yeah. just doing a doing a one-off tour mm. making that bank they can play a lot larger places and neither one of them have been playing for a while they can t- tour amphitheaters and stuff if they had the original band and say did mind crime all the way or, or whatever just a total nostalgia trip um yeah. but i don't think i'd have any interest in hearing what they have have to offer as no. far as new material i mean i i, I can't even st- i'm not sure about you guys but Free guitars in a band is too much as well. I don't think it's good for Maiden. I don't think it's good for, um, I think, Accept have got free guitars on tour at the moment. I just don't like the free guitar thing. I think it's too much. I mean, that's a possibility, you know, isn't it? Not getting rid of anyone, but bringing an extra guitar in, Chris DeGarmo. Mm-hmm. But I it mean, depends, just... on the, it depends on the song arrangements. I mean, if you're yeah. using, if everybody's got a part, yeah, and then it makes sense, you know. Yeah. But if you're just playing the same part that the, the guy next to you, then why you don't need it, you know? And I, I think that's why I don't really like it in general because it's I don't, you know, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't right? Uh, but but the yeah, and with... Maiden Maiden had I don't think has done a good job of utilizing no. three of their no. guitars because you don't hear three parts, you know. It's just yeah, three no. just playing the same part. Totally, I think it's Primal Fear actually that have got three as well now. One will feel mm. free. <laughs> I mean, they're just guitar, guitar, guitar. But no, some great, some great points there. I think we're all in sort of agreement there. I think in general, um, but not to the rest of the world, obviously. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they'll listen to our sage advice and change all of their minds. I'm sure. I'm sure. They, I'm yeah. sure we do. I'm sure we will. The next one's a pretty big one that's been in the the press of lately. Um, Sebastian back or bark, wherever you want to say to Skid Row. Now, let's go, let's go, Dom, this time. Let's go around the other way. What do you reckon on Sebastian back and Skid Row then, Dom? Well, you know, uh, I think they've had a real uh rough time of it lately with Eric because that didn't seem to be a personality clash or anything. You know, he was in the impossible position of. He left heat because he had this he had this problem heart problem or something so he had his operation he was recuperating his favorite band of all time calls and says he wanted to sing in our band <laughs> and he probably shouldn't have he yeah. probably should have recovered for another six months or something but what are you going to say you know yeah. no, oh no i'm not going to sing for my favorite band of all time <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in so he comes in does a great tour. I mean, see him on video, um, you know, just hitting the notes with ease, you know. Um, the Gang's All Here was, wasn't the barnstormer that I think everybody wanted, but it was decent. It was good. There are some good songs on there. Um, so I, they, they've had a hard problem. Um, I will say that a lot of people blame Sebastian for this and his attitude and he's too hard to deal with and all this stuff, but the other three guys, they haven't exactly been kind to their other singers either. I mean, look at Johnny Solinger. He was in the band for, what, 15 years? And they fired him over the phone and announced Tony Harnell like an hour later. That's some shady business. Because that means they were in discussions with Tony Harnell all this time. Didn't let their singer that's been there, that picked up the pieces after Bach, 
and toured the world with them and made three records and stuff, you know, whether they thought that he wasn't giving 100%, 100% anymore, whatever. But man, to fire him over the phone and to announce Tony Harnell. And then Tony Harnell doesn't stick around for longer than six months or whatever. And then they got the next guy, J JP Thert. And I think they fired him because, because of Eric. So it's like, it can't just be Sebastian's personality because those three guys sound pretty toxic to me. <laughs> and also uh, Tony Harnell apparently does not want to talk about his time in Skid Row either. I mean, he's not. So that couldn't have been good. Obviously, yeah, there obviously wasn't good things happening there, was there, with him in the band either. Yeah. I mean, it's a, if, if, if you hear somebody that's been married four times and they always blame the other person, you got to <laughs> expect that the person's, you know, <laughs> there's got to be something there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as far as performing now, no, Sebastian doesn't have the voice. Um... You know, you showed me that video of of him touring solo with with the bent in the background doing the screen for Monkey Business, which is just it's absolutely unforgivable yeah. to go see Sebastian Bach and you've got some chick behind. <laughs> was, was she playing keyboards or anything? I don't even know. Was she just? I think she just had a mic stand, just a microphone. Yeah, and she, just, just... And, and she does the famous Monkey Business scream. Yeah, I'd be like. Fuck off! Are you kidding? <laughs> you <know? laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, as I said with Queensrÿche, and I said it's probably going to be the rest of the bands we talk about. It's all about nostalgia for some for some fans. It really is. Mm -hmm. If they get all together and they tour, it's not going to be what you remember. It's not going to be an enthusiastic band of twenty, thirty year olds no. just giving it all. It's going to be fairly weak vocals you know it's just it's not gonna have the same vibe it's just not and you can go and you can sing along and whatever but i don't know and as far as new music i mean god if it's gonna sound anything like subhuman race forget about it well i mean i've got to say that i was quite impressed with the sebastian bach solo album but there's a but there yeah it hasn't i've just uploaded actually my favorite albums of the last six months and that wasn't on it didn't make because it because it because it hasn't got a chorus across the whole fucking album there might be one or oh, two right. but but that's what it's lacking so that is songwriting again sebastian bark again and his vocals ain't gonna fucking be like they are on the album either because i've heard them no so you know yeah that, that's another thing P people will hear uh these older singers on record and think they're going to sound like that on a year-long tour they're yeah. not <laughs> they're they're gargling tea and you know trying to get the throat muscles in the studio to to hit that note that, that once in a lifetime note and you ain't gonna hear that you know no, definitely not no yeah. some great points anyway, there mate um mr mark, to know. <laughs> mr mark clover what do you think about sebastian great his new his new album is pretty good but with with the studio trickery that's available to them now they can they can make anybody sound good and would he be able to pull off the old stuff live no not not of the quality that we would expect to hear uh sadly i never got to see him with sebastian so i would like to i don't know uh again going back to nostalgia it, it would be cool to see it just because i never got to see him back in the day i saw him three times with solinger and I was actually pretty impressed with him. Uh, this was 2001. Uh, they were one of the opening acts on the Kiss, the original yeah. Kiss Farewell Tour. And uh, I thought he did a damn good job. And that the first album they did with him was was actually pretty good. Second one, not so much. But I don't know. They just they've been through so many singers, and it's just become laughable almost. Like you know, who who's going to be the Skid Row singer this week? Uh, I got to say. Uh, I know, <laughs> I know. Lee doesn't like female singers, but I've watched some of what? the videos. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> I've watched some of the videos with Lizzie Hale filling in here lately, and she absolutely slayed it. Uh, she sounds better than Sebastian has sounded in years doing those old songs. I mean, she she really did them justice, and uh might be kind of neat if she stepped in and became their full-time singer but that's not going to happen either so 
I don't know. I think they'd make a lot of money if they did it just because people have been clamoring for it for, for decades now. I mean, this is one of the longest running, you know, I wish he would come back scenarios. Uh, but like Dom said, there's so much ego in that band. It's not just, it can't just be Sebastian. Yeah, he is a perpetual teenager like Tommy Lee. Uh, neither one of those guys will ever grow up. But <laughs> the other guys in the band, they, they've got some responsibility here as well because, you know, they're clearly very demanding and hard to work with. And, you know, sounds like they don't really know what they want either. But I don't know. Going forward, who are, who are they going to hire now? Uh, I would almost like to see them go ahead and bring Sebastian back, bring Sebastian back and do a tour and see how it goes, see if they can coexist. And, you know, I don't know. Eventually they're going to have to retire, and it, it would kind of be cool to see them go out, you know, together like they started. But I don't know. They're still fairly young compared to a lot of our heroes. So they've still got some years left in them if they can just get something going that's got some staying power. It must be tempting, though, mustn't it? I mean, even though they obviously hate each other, the money must, they must think, yeah, All right, let's just do it for one year, yeah. you know, no matter how shit it is, and pull, <laughs> pull, and pull all that money in. I don't know, they, it must be tempting, but you know, that proves S Sebastian wants to, doesn't he? He keeps saying he wants to, don't know about now, right now, but he does, he's been saying yes for ages, but that, that's just money, probably. But, um, it must be tempting for the band. Surely. What do you reckon then, Todd? Well, I guess uh, I'm thinking, are we talking, do we just want reunion reunion tours? And well, just anything, anything really, anything really. What would you, would you want anything out of it? I, I guess, um, yeah, if they could get along with each other for a tour, it'd be interesting to hear. Um, even though, you know, his voice isn't going to be the same uh that's going to be more and more of the case any any you know nowadays so um you i think i go into these shows knowing that it's not going to be the same you know it's it's just been too long uh unfortunately for many singers to try to maintain that uh especially the vocal range oh, that, you know some of these guys have had back when they were young you know <laughs> they weren't definitely weren't thinking ahead to Okay, <laughs> 30 years from now, I'm going to have to sing this. And, you know, poor Brian Johnson, you know, has got to sing that same way through just the rest of his life, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, but I think that, you know, it's, they both have, um, both, I, and by both, I mean the band and Sebastian separately have separately been their creative juices have been flowing i mean they haven't been too prolific but they still have been releasing albums you know over these years and it sounds like if they could get on the same page you could release a new album with sebastian now whether or not that, that they would last a whole tier, tour probably not but um but yeah i mean if if you know they both sound like they, they, they they've been wanting to to express themselves and and put out new music so uh, if if they could do that together that would be get, good and if uh but i don't think that they have to necessarily i, I don't know maybe i'm not i'm too wishy-washy on this on this top particular band but uh um i've never been a i i like skid row and i think that i've enjoyed them because they're more the heavier side of i mm. am kind of sounding but uh um you know i've never been a huge yeah. fan but uh so i don't know if they, if they were to put out a new album i would i would buy it you know together mm. uh if they decide not to i will buy their separate ones so it, it doesn't matter to me yeah good good point i mean you're not gonna an album's not gonna be what you see live for a start is it that sebastian's solo album proves that it's you know, you could look at that two ways, couldn't you? You're getting something that sounds better than what it is, but that could annoy you at the same time. It almost, I think that's what I'm a bit annoyed about. That's why I didn't make it my top albums, because I know that that's not the reality. 
Mm. Do you know what I mean? When you're listening to something, you think that's not actually what he would sound like if he sang that song live now. So that's not a band sitting in a room together making music. Yeah. No, you know? no, no, exactly, exactly. Karen, are you much of a Skid Row fan? I was back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a great deal to add on top of what other people have said, really. When I was thinking about this subject, I guess this was the one where I thought it probably had most of a sense of inevitability about it happening one day. Um, maybe, yeah, I mean, they'd make an absolute bomb out of it, wouldn't they? If they could tolerate, um, if, if it lasted more than five minutes, so you wonder if it... <laughs> If it even got going, how long it would actually last. Um, but yeah, while um, we're on the subject of Lizzie Hale, I mean, I know a lot of people don't um, necessarily think it was the right thing maybe for them to to bring her in. But I admire her enormously for taking on that role, um, knowing what people were going to be saying. And I mean, she has taken it on with gusto from what I've seen. And she is a very strong lady and uh, with a massive voice, obviously. And uh, so I really admire her. She's I, I, it's not going to be permanent, but I really admire her for stepping up and doing that tour. What I find a bit strange is they've almost... You, because you, I read quite a bit of posts about when I see live stuff from Eric and from Lizzie Howe. It's almost like people have given Lizzie Howe more of a punt than they did Eric. I don't know why. Why would that be? Because he just hit all the notes as well, didn't he? I mean, it, I think the first show he did with him, he was a bit nervous. Literally the first show only, and then on he just sang like Sebastian Bach did in fucking nineteen eighty, whatever it was, nineteen eighty nine. You know, it seemed a lot of people were giving, and rightly so, by the way, it's Jam. You've got me confused with Jam, actually, Mark. It's, it's him who doesn't like female singers. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they seem to be giving Lizzie Howe a lot more room. I think you yeah. know the answer to this question, Lee, and you just don't oh, want no. to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't actually know. No, I don't know. Because she looks better. Because she's a hot chick, yeah. Yeah, or it maybe, maybe. But she did do a good... That's why you see all these videos of these hot chicks playing guitar when there's like 500,000 other artists in the entire world. <laughs> but, but you're seeing the, the hot chick play. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I haven't got... I'm, I'm sort of with the no to... In, but it's a bit of a different situation than Queen's, right? Because you... I think Todd might have sort of stepped upon this. Queen's Rock is a totally different beast because of the music they're playing there and the music they're producing. Skid Row are sort of, yeah, and I sort of liked the Skid Row album at first and I quickly went off of that and I was like, this ain't as good as I thought it was. You know, when you get excited about hearing something and you're like a bit more excited than you actually, you know, are when yeah. you live with the album for a little while. So I don't know where they're going to go with it. So, you know, it's not as if they're in a good place, is it really? But um, the only thing I would say, um, uh, including Jeff Tate and um, Sebastian Bach, is this is not me having a go about their vocal ability because we all know how hard it must be to sing at that age. So, you know, it's it's not, it's just the blindness to their life they was back then. Let's just admit that they're not and we're getting something different. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it, you know, who does sing like that? There's not many, is there? Than they did back 40 years ago. Um, okay, that was a good subject. And the next one I got, not well, that's a good episode. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we have got a couple more, but this is an interesting one. I don't know if Don will have much of a say on this one. It doesn't matter if he doesn't, I'm not really sure actually. But we've got Journey, and this is a big one, Steve Perry. This comes up all the time um so why don't we go to someone i know will ever something to say on this mark lower we go mark lower first on this i love steve perry he's one of my all-time favorite singers i mean he is known as the voice for a reason but unfortunately his voice uh has changed to the point to where there's no way he could Sing even like I've said with some of the others, he couldn't even sing his own catalog um, with the way his voice has changed. Um, he he almost sounded like a different person. I mean, he really doesn't. 
No, I didn't buy it, but I heard a lot of samples from his recent solo album. Of course, it's you know it's not a rock album. It's nothing I want to hear anyway. It's easy listening kind of stuff. Uh, but I just can't imagine, even if he wanted to. I mean, he's 70, 72, 73 now, I think. Uh, so I doubt seriously he would ever want to do a full tour anymore anyway. But um, I can't imagine him singing. He could probably handle the ballads. Uh, but anything with any power to it, I don't think he would. I think he would tarnish his own legacy to the point to where it would be counterproductive. Uh I think Arnell has done a amazing job over the last 15 years or whatever it's been since he's been in the band. And, um, you know, again, nostalgia. Yeah. People would love to see Steve Perry come back, but that ship has sailed and it's best, best to leave that rock unturned at this point. Uh, again, when they finally decide to call it a day, it would be awesome to have him come out, you know, on the final show or whatever and do a handful of songs that that he could do, you know, with uh with some justice to the material. But um I'll touch on this as well while we're talking about Journey. And I haven't heard many people wanting this, but I was a big fan of Steve Algeri. Uh especially the first album he did with Arrival. It's actually my third favorite Journey album of all time. And I thought I thought his tenure ended prematurely. And kind of in the back of my mind, I had always hoped that maybe, you know, one day if Arnell decides to move on, which there's been talk, you know, over the last few years with all the drama that Arnell, you know, mm -hmm. may may go on and do something on his own and I always had it in the back of my mind well maybe they'll bring out jerry back mm -hmm. and um you know finish up their career with him but i've got to i've got to say it pains me i've seen some recent videos with him his voice is totally shot oh man uh, mm -hmm. uh absolutely well, i think it, it isn't the reason of why he's not in jerry anymore because he because he couldn't handle the road like that they were on tour for like a year and his voice just kept yeah well, to kept be on out and everything in my mind, I thought that was an, just an excuse back in the day, oh. uh, but evidently it was true. Uh, they said he had damaged his voice and just couldn't, you know, couldn't go forward. And I kind of thought that was just an excuse they put out there because they saw that, you know, they weren't gaining much traction with him as far as, you know, hitting the big time again. And in my mind, I always thought that was just kind of a, a cop out. But evidently it was true. Uh, mm -hmm. His voice is, uh, now he did a solo album as well. And again, with studio trickery, they can make, you know, they they can mend a lot of mm -hmm. uh, bad voices. But I've, I've seen some very recent live footage over the last year or so. And he was doing Perry material and even some of his own material that he did with journey and he just he can't he can't hit those notes anymore it's it's almost it's almost sad to watch a lot of these guys you know they're just doing it because i mean what's he going to do at this point is he going to go back to work at the gap where he was before journey pulled him into the band uh he's got to make a living this is yeah. you know i guess how he makes his living now but unfortunately um uh, he he can't bring it anymore either. So Arnell is the man for them for however long they, they choose to carry on. I hope they don't do any new music based on that last album. It was absolutely horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I listened to it three times just to, you know, give it a, a fair shake. But there's not a single song on that album I ever want to hear again, to be honest with you. And uh, I hope they just, you know, for however long they choose to go, they – they play the hits and be done with it. But no, as far as Perry coming back, no, I don't don't see it. And at this stage, don't really want it. I'll tell you what, I'm starting to lose faith in myself here because uh, I was the same situation with that fucking last Journey album. I think you clutch a straw Oof. sometimes and you like, you know, you want to hear something 
that ain't actually there. Yeah. And again, and again, I'm like you. I haven't listened to a song off that. I don't want to listen to a song off that. Yeah. Horrible. Again. So, um, yeah, some great points there. What about you, Todd? Are you uh, in the journey at all? Yeah, I can. I enjoy journey. Um, and uh, I, I just don't see Perry coming back. I, I think that, uh, you know, to all the same, you know, Mark made a lot of great points there about his voice. Oh, and, so. You know, yeah. and then you also have the uh, the issue that he hasn't really been he hasn't really released any decent music on his own for a long, long time. I mean, he had that first solo album when he was still with Journey, and that was good. He had yeah. some good, good hits on it. But, uh, you know, what is there? For the Love of Strange Medi Medicine, whatever was out, and the and and that had a couple of good songs, but for the most part, it wasn't that great. And then <clears throat> the, the new album from, you know, whatever it was, uh, six seven eight years ago now and it was i i couldn't hardly listen to that thing it was it was really not good and so if if he doesn't have the um it doesn't have it in him to write and create good new music and then why would you want him back in the band you know it's, it, I, I just don't think that he would add anything and I feel bad saying all this because I really have enjoyed his voice. I think, you know, he's got one of the best rock voices of all, of all time. I mean, we had that, that you know, that uh, video from, you know, where we talked about vocalists. And mm -hmm. you could cite Steve Perry as really having all the qualities of a great singer. And, oh, yeah. and so it's been really great uh, having his catalog available, but. And nowadays, I, I just don't see him really adding anything to the band at all. Um, so, but it sounds like, uh, you know, hopefully Journey can patch things up with internal everybody else in the band. <laughs> you know, it sounds like they've been they've been having trouble getting along and, and <laughs> you know, so uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I, I haven't disliked, you know, I... I, I wouldn't call any of their their albums that they've released over the last you know 15 years or so one of my favorites of all time you know of theirs or even of the that year but i've enjoyed their music you know i i didn't have a problem with their latest album i thought it was pretty you know pretty decent. there were some great songs on it you know maybe it wasn't you know consistently good all the way through mm -hmm. but I, I i i liked some of the, the songs quite a bit so I, I think that they, you know, if they want to continue releasing an album every five, six, seven years, and I'm I'm all for it. Oh, thanks, mate. Um, some great points there, by the way. I mean, there's one thing I think that before I go on to Karen and Dom, there's one thing I'd say is that that you think about the vocalists they've had and the problems they have, then these journey songs must be a fucking nightmare to sing, mustn't they? I mean, it just seems that. I think even, I think it might even, who's been the other singers for Journey? Um, Jeff Scott Jeff, Soto. Jeff, Jeff Scott Soto, I think he, he's even said in the past that singing those songs, you know, to try and compete with that early Steve Perry vocal is must be ridiculously bad. Or or you sing it completely different and you get stick for that. But, you know, it's just, yeah. oh, there was that problems, doesn't he, with his vocals? Mm -hmm. You know, um, what do you reckon, Karen, are you a Journey fan at all? I, I don't dislike Journey, and I really appreciate their musical importance, particularly uh, the importance of Steve Perry, um, but I don't really have a strong enough opinion on this, so, and I'd hate to sit here and make trite comments, so um, <laughs> I'm going to let Dom take over. Well, I do all the time. There's nothing, I write them sort of comments all the yeah, time. Yeah, listen. <laughs> None of the stuff that comes out of my mouth means anything as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, Dom, I see a bit of head shaking, a bit of a nodding and that guy. Yeah, you know, well, I agree with you. And uh, Sorry, Todd, but I agree with you on that last album. I thought it was virtually unlistenable. Um, but it was mostly because of that production. My God, why did it sound like horrible demos? Why Why would a Journey yeah. album ever... You get these, these Swedish bands on Frontiers, then their production sounds like a million bucks, you know? And then you've got Journey here, who are millionaires could afford the best studios and the best producers and that's the best they come up with it yeah. just was mind-blowing to me anyway the other thing i'll say is that i've always respected steve perry because he stepped away when he knew that he couldn't cut it anymore you never saw him you saw him at 
some baseball games sometimes. You know, he still lives in San Francisco, so he would go to the baseball um, and they'd play lights or something in the in the baseball stadium. He would get up and do this with the crowd and stuff. I just thought it was such a cool move. He didn't make an announcement. He didn't do, retire. He didn't whatever. He just faded in the background because he knew that he couldn't cut it anymore. I mean, obviously, he's a one in a million singer. So that's why these other singers that have come and tried to replace him have all had problems. Because mm-hmm. he's just one of the, you know, one of those guys that that, that can only do those notes. And he can't yeah. even do them anymore. Yeah. So, you know. His his solo album, I guess, was, you know, I was surprised when it came out, the one from a few years ago. Uh, but apparently it was a really personal thing for him. I think it somebody had died, like his girlfriend or something had died, so he and yeah. wanted him to do another album or something like that. Um, so I understand why he did it. He hasn't really come back with anything else since that, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I always respected him for I, I, just coming back. And look at I mean, look at the I think let alone that and the voice and you know I, I I agree with that and there's there's a lot of this stuff going on in there about who again is the pain in the ass to work for. I mean you'd be like you'd be competing with Neil Sean's wife, wouldn't you, if he was in the band there as well? Oh, and and Jonathan Kane's wife who speaks in tongues. I mean it's like fucking it's bit it's like having Spinal Tap on tour it and your fucking wife's the manager and oh my god fuck that. 